Welcome everyone to Press TV's news review program where we get in depth in one of the day's top stories. And now the United Nations War Crimes Panel has called on the United States to carry out a thorough probe into civilian casualties caused by the country's airstrikes in Syria. The panel has urged Washington to ensure those responsible for violations of international humanitarian laws to be held accountable. It's also asked the U.S. to make its pu uh, findings public. The U.N. has call, or the U.N.'s call, pardon, comes as U.S. military has been accused of hiding information on its airstrikes against Syria in 2019. The New York Times had reported that the strikes considered war crimes claimed the lives of up to 64 Syrian women and children. Despite repeated calls, though Washington has not conducted an independent probe into the bombings. This is while the U.S. is also under fierce criticism for its military presence in the Arab country without the permission of Damascus. Washington justifies its troop deployment there under the pretext of fighting Daesh terrorists. And now joining us is Ken Stone from the Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War from Hamilton, Ontario, and Tim Anderson, Director at Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us from Sydney. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you both to the program. I hope you're both doing well, I guess. We'll start there in Sydney, Australia. I uh, haven't spoken to you in a while, Mr. Tim Anderson. hope you're safe and doing well. Very ironic, the U.S. is all around the world uh, trying to hold other people to very high standards. Why not play by the same rule book? Well, unfortunately, one of the reasons is that the United Nations is demonstrating through this commission very clearly that it has lost touch with any sense of conflict of interest. The, the so-called commission of inquiry into uh, human rights violations in Syria is dominated completely by active participants in the war. That is to say, it's been led by a Brazilian diplomat. It, it was co-chaired for, for a long time by a US diplomat and now it has British and American embedded members in there. So really there's no uh, sense of conflict of interest. These people, for example, in the report, the most glaring omission in the report, it says nothing about condemning the illegal occupation of Syrian territory by the two largest NATO armies and by Israel. So unfortunately, I think the, the conflict of interest in this report is really uh, undermining credibility in UN institutions generally. Thank you, Tim. And Ken, Tim uh, makes some pretty good points. We also remember that uh, there was a war crimes probe supposed to be carried out by ICC Chief Prosecutor Fatua Ben Souda and possible U.S. war crimes in Afghanistan. The Trump administration put sanctions on the ICC for trying to carry out that probe and uh, restricted the visas for Fatua Ben Souda, ben Souda to go into Afghanistan and her team and even threaten them with arrest. I mean, it's crazy to carry out a probe against possible war crimes in uh, Afghanistan. And a similar thing happened during uh, another possible to be probed that was shut down with respect to Iraq. Your thoughts? There's a tremendous amount of hypocrisy in the West here about uh, military operations. Um, the, uh, the U.S. carried on uh, a, a war in the Afghanistan for 20 years. Um, the U.S. and NATO, I should say, carried on a, a war against the people of Afghanistan for 20 years, and uh, they had to leave with their tails between their legs. And no, there is no accounting, uh, there is no one uh, punished for the many, many crimes that the U U.S. committed in Afghanistan, for example. Uh, I'm ta talking about the uh, uh, Garib, uh, the uh, prison uh, and the uh, uh, Guantanamo Bay um, and many other uh, many other crimes in Canada it's the same Canadian uh, forces took uh, prisoners in Afghanistan and handed them over for torture to the uh, to the uh, Afghan authorities and uh, rather than uh, face the music the, uh, our Prime Minister at the time Harper uh, prorogued Parliament in order that the uh, that the uh, complaints would not be heard. And they still have not been heard 10 years later. So um, the, the US and Western countries have for centuries, in, as part of their imperial program, carried on wars against people in the global south, what we used to call the third world. And they have never, to my knowledge, ever had been held responsible for them. Um, and when it comes to wars that are taking place, uh, uh, against U.S. 
vassals, such as the one, the special military operation that took place, uh, started a few days ago in Ukraine. Um, the U.S. Uh, war hype, the U.S. hype against that has been tremendous over here. It's the only thing you hear on the media, day in, day out. Um, but, and, and at the U.N., when the vote took place and the 141 countries voted with, uh, 140 countries voted with the U.S. to censure Russia, the Syrian uh, permanent representative at the UN had this uh, observation to make, and I, th I think it's very relevant. He said, those who show enthusiasm today regarding the defense of the Charter of the United Nations should show the same enthusiasm against Israel's continuing occupation of Arab lands and against the Turkish and US forces violation of the sovereignty of Syria. That's what he said at the UN, and he voted his country and he voted against the resolution. So I'm trying to say there's a huge double standard uh, when it comes to uh, Western wars against the people of color uh, around the world versus uh, military operations that take place against uh, vassal states of the United States, such as Ukraine. The United okay. States uh, has been in Syria for many years now using the pretext of ISIS as the uh, reason for their presence. But as, as your other guest, uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Anderson, can show you probably in chapter and verse, there is so much evidence that the US and its allies, Saudi Arabia and other Arab monarchies, created ISIS. They funded ISIS, they supported ISIS. Um, and now ISIS fighters, we have reliable reports, have been taken from Syria and sent into the Ukraine to help the uh, Zelensky government. So ISIS, the excuse of ISIS is a pretext for the U.S. to have a military occupation of uh, eastern, the eastern third of Syria, where they steal, they steal every day convoys of oil that belong to the Syrian government to pay for the reconstruction of the country after 11 years of U.S. regime change war. And they also steal the wheat from Syria, such that the people in the rest of the country, in the two-thirds that, um, that are not occupied by the U.S., are hungry. So we should not, uh, we should not for a moment, forget that the, the U.S. maintains an enormous double standard and hypocrisy when it comes to international relations. Thank you, Ken. And, and Tim, Ken makes some interesting points there. How can you turn to Vladimir Putin and already start in 10 days into 15 days into this thing, calling him a war criminal, if you're not going to hold George Bush and Tony Blair in, to account for the many civilian lives? We're talking about 64 women and children in Syria. We're talking hundreds of thousands in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're talking about 474, uh, which is the current count in Ukraine. You're going to talk about war crimes. You're going to call people a war criminal. Where is, when does that, why does that standard not apply to Western leaders? Well, of course it does. The U.S. is the worst war criminal in the world. And unless we start from that point, we won't really understand what's going on. Here we have a U.N. committee saying, uh, and the way it's being reported in the West is, not exactly the way you put it, they're saying the U.N. committee is asking for the U.S. to investigate war crimes in Syria. We know exactly what the result of that's going to be. So the problem is that the, the world is upside down and we have to start with some independent perspectives on what's going on in the world. As you said, looking at those other wars, but even looking at Ukraine, for example, we have to look at the crimes that led up to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And that was, for example, the, the coup in 2014, the, the, the arming and funding of neo-Nazis in Ukraine by NATO and by Israel, um, and then the aggression against Russia itself. Um, so. There's a series of crimes here, and the the, West, the Western media, the Western government's obsession with the Russian military operation of the last two weeks is something that abstracts it from reality. So really, we need uh, to be talking uh, things much more in their perspective, as we are able to do in independent media such as your own, but uh, there are very few other Western media that are allowing this sort of space. There's tremendous censorship, tremendous... Um, disciplining of voices and what people are, are allowed to say about any of these wars. 
All right, gentlemen, always a pleasure to check in with both of you. Time has gotten the better of us. Ken Stone from the Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War joining us from Hamilton, Ontario, and Professor Tim Anderson, Director at the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us there out of Sydney, Australia. And viewers, that's a wrap for this segment of your Press TV's News Review Program. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye for now.